Yes, hello. Hello, Charlotte. How's it going? Let's go, get amps. Come on, come on, come on. Welcome. There's plenty of wine over there. Come on, y'all go, y'all go, y'all go. Hey, uh, thank y'all so much for coming out, and thank you uh, for the Tavers Innovation Center for hosting us. Uh, we got some innovation right here. You're going to see this little double mic all night long. Um, one is running to live stream. The other is running up here. So uh, that's our little innovation. And we may, oh, yep, that's our little innovation for this evening. Um, speaking of innovation, we got lots of innovation as far as uh, Shopify stores. Who runs a Shopify store here? Who runs one? Love to see it. Love to see it. You're in the right place. Uh, the guy who's about to come up, my, my dear friend, Scott Cunningham, I'm about to introduce him, but uh, he's been working with Shopify stores uh, for, for years. He's gotten tremendous results. Uh, he, he runs an agency called Socialite out of Canada. Anyone from Canada here other than uh, Socialite? Nope. I didn't. Oh, we got one. Yes. Love to see it. Uh, you know, so they came all the way down here. Uh, love to share uh, all the information that, uh, that he's gathered. Uh, through years of working with uh, with Shopify stores, proven results. Uh, you know, he I, I I was on a call with his business partner, uh, Kirian, on Friday, um, and he describes Scott in a in a perfect way. Uh, he's relentless in his pursuit of growth and learning every single day. Love this quality. Love how giving he is with uh, with all the information, and and he's going to be uh, doing that for y'all here today. So. Uh, without further ado, please welcome Scott Cunningham to the stage. Get it, give it up for him. Give it up for him. Scott, here you go, brother. All right, all right. Thanks a lot, Garrett. I, uh, when someone intros you like that, it gives you goosebumps because I think what Garrett's saying there is true about. There we go. So it, I think what Garrett's saying is true about the relentless pursuit of learning. So I saw a lot of hands of people who already have Shopify stores. How are, the, how are those going for you? Is anybody like completely happy and content at where they're at? Yeah? Hands up if you're like crushing it right now and you're pretty content with where you're at. Okay. Okay, hands up if you think it's going okay but could be a little bit better. Okay, okay. I feel like, I always feel like that about my own business. I don't ever feel like it's perfect. I always want to assume I can do better than I'm doing today. Now, this is a meetup after all, so I want to kind of get to know everybody here uh, as loosely as we can. I know there's a lot of people, but what kind of Shopify stores do you own? What do you sell? Uh, industrial industrial ad adhesives. That's a niche market probably, right? That's probably a niche market, and that's probably why you're doing so well. Who else? Clothing. Clothing women's apparel? Uh, any, any kind of like spe specific uh, customer segment? Oh, hello. Yeah. Any specific customer segment that you sell to? It's contemporary. C contemporary? Okay, going pretty well? Pretty good, could be better. Okay, anybody else? Skincare. Skincare? What, what uh, specific problem do you solve? Uh, eczema, acne. Eczema, acne? Is it like aromatherapy? No, okay, something else, but that's good. Who else? Moroccan rugs. You, you said you're Canadian? I am, Moroccan Canadian. I have a Moroccan rug at, at my house. So we got <laughs> okay. Who else? Shopify stores. Body positivity, a fitness, uh, fitness apparel for women. That sounds great. Okay. Who else? Bakery. Do you where uh, where are you making the the goods and selling them from? Okay. Good stuff. Is that going pretty well? Okay. A couple more. Balloons. I love these niche products. Okay, so great to meet you all. I'm gonna be talking to you about how to create a high converting e-commerce campaign. I'm literally going to spoon feed the exact strategies that we do when we're building a campaign. So if you wanna take notes, it might be a good idea. You can actually implement this stuff because we're actually gonna be workshopping a couple of things together. Sound good so far? Yeah. Sound good? Yeah. All right. I don't know what's going on with the mic and the audio. Is there someone that could check on it? I don't know if it's coming in and out, but. I don't know, we'll, we'll just keep going here, but uh, okay. So a little bit about me, like uh, Garrett was saying, I have worked in e-commerce space for 10 plus years. I'm the co-founder of a business called Merchant Mastery and we do mentorship for early stage businesses and we help them get to their first 100K a year. Who's doing 100K a year right now? Okay, good stuff. We also have an agency and we help people who are already doing a million get to their first million dollar month. 
So that's the two things that we specialize in. I'm also an elite coach over at Digital Marketer. And the reason we're in Charlotte is because Digital Marketer is hosting a training day tomorrow. And I'm going to be doing a little talk there. And I was like, we're going to Charlotte. We got to, we got to meet up with the, the Shopify entrepreneurs, right? That makes sense? Yeah. All right. So well, let's see how this heck is going here. So these are the things that we're going to be reviewing today. So I'm going to be showing you a tool that we use to map out your entire e-commerce campaign. This thing is called the customer value journey. You're going to want to take notes on this. This is one of my favorite tools that I've adopted from my friends over at Digital Marketer. We're going to be using a customer avatar canvas. This tool here is probably my single most favorite and powerful tool to help you get better results for your campaign. There's no point in marketing for the sake of marketing. You need to understand who you are selling to. That's why I was asking everybody here, who's your specific customer segment? What are their specific pain points? And how do you help transform them into some amazing aspirational state? Because if you can nail that down, the rest of the stuff is gonna go a lot better. Okay, and then we're gonna talk about offer attributes. And this is how you stack your offer. So it's one thing to talk to your perfect customer and say, hey, I know the pain you're going through. I'm going to help you transform. It's a whole other thing to say, yeah, we also have a thousand reviews. We also solve this problem. We, this is our brand. This is like all these other things about you that they fall in love with when you present your message. And when you get all those things right, you get a whole bunch more sales out of it. And then I'm going to show you how to create high converting ad copy from your customer avatar canvas and from these offer attributes. And then I'm going to talk about ad creative. I'm going to talk about testing. I'm going to show you how you can run some little experiments on Facebook, some ad campaigns, and learn and validate which messaging is knocking out of the park the most from you and use it on the rest of your campaign assets. Sound good? All right. You got to bear with me for the clicker. Maybe I'll stand over here. Okay. So the first tool that we're looking at here is the customer value journey. So anybody think about the customer journey when you're selling products? Yeah? Okay. So this is one of my favorite tools. Like I said, I adopted it for my friends over at Digital Marketer, a couple of guys. We've got the president of Digital Marketer, Mark, in the back here. They're out of Austin, Texas. They're one of the most leading authorities in marketing in the world. And I'm one of their coaches for their coaching program too. So really happy that these guys came out today. But essentially with the customer value journey, you need to map how you're going to attract your perfect customer who's out there in the internet abyss right now. You know your perfect customers out there, right? Everybody know their perfect customers out there? We need to plan how we're going to track that perfect customer at the first stage. That's the first stage there, awareness, right? So at awareness, this is when the customer discovers that you can get them from a pain state to a gain state, right? So they're just like, oh, this sounds like something that's interesting to me. And you're going to do this with things like cold ads. Like you might advertise on Facebook. You might do a pop-up shop. What other ways do you get in front of your customer? Affiliate marketing, influencer marketing. Like all these things would be ways at the awareness stage to get in front of your customer for the first time. And you want to make sure it's called the customer value journey because you need to make sure that there's a value at every touch point that the customer sees you. So if there's perceived value at one stage, they're like, God dang it, I'm in. They go to the next stage. Perceived value, I'm in. Next stage. And it keeps going like that. So if they see an ad that resonates with a pain point or an aspirational state and they get value, guess what? What do they do? Go to the next stage. So they go to the engage stage here, uh, clicker. Okay. So now well, that's okay. We'll just look at engage. So now the customer is deepening trust and familiarity with your brand. So first they saw an ad, it resonated to a pain point or an aspirational state that they had. They click through. Now they're on your product page, right? Now they're trying to vet you, right? So this is where they want to build. You want to build trust and familiarity with your customer segment. Okay. If that goes well, you want to make sure that you're collecting email addresses. Does anybody use pop-ups, forms, exit intent flyouts, these kinds of things? They work really well, right? So you want to collect email addresses in exchange for some type of offer, like a welcome offer. Then they're going to convert at the convert stage. This is when they transact for the first time. And here you're thinking about, like, the last thing you want to do is leave it up to chance. When you invest in ads or you spend money and time trying to get visitors to your site, you don't want to cross your fingers and hopefully they buy. You want to lead them to some compelling front-end offer. It could be like a welcome offer, like I said, 10% offer, or a gift with purchase offer. It could be like free shipping over a certain threshold. You don't even need to discount. You just need to justify that your offer's value is greater than the price, right? And you need to be thinking about average order value, right? You don't want to just like 
Every time a customer buys from you the first time, there's a customer acquisition cost associated with it. You paid to acquire that customer. So if you can increase the amount that they order, the AOV, then you're going to offset that cost right away. Okay, so, so far we're at convert. Now we're going to the excite stage. Excite stage, this is when they experience your product for the first time, right? So up until now, it's all been online. And now at the excite stage, they're so excited to get the product in the mail. They're unboxing it. They're like really getting excited about it. But the true excitement comes whether or not your product delivers on the transformation they believed they were getting from you. So you said your product was going to do one thing, and now they're experiencing it and they're testing it. And if it delivers on the value that you promised that it would, they're going to become a forever customer and fan of you. Okay, so, so far, they've kind of got the product in the mail. They're excited about it. This is where we need to get every customer. Does a lot of people here do a lot of repeat selling to your customer base? There's more margin when you sell to your customer a second, third, and fourth time because there's no longer customer acquisition costs associated with that sale. So acquisition is a whole different ball game. But once you get a whole bunch of customers that you acquired in there, you need to start taking good care of them and think about the second offer, the third offer, the fourth offer, and ultimately the full customer lifetime value of that customer. And that's how you build a sustainable, profitable store in the long run. Alrighty, so from there, okay, so we're now we're gonna go to the advocate stage. Now the customer's vouching for you on your behalf. So who here is collecting testimonials and reviews from your customers and user-generated content? Yeah, very powerful stuff to use in ads. So you always wanna be collecting that stuff from people who love you, right? And lastly, at the promote stage here, now the customer is telling all their friends and family all about how you delivered on their transformation. They're smiling from ear to ear because you delivered with your product. And you could do things like referral marketing strategies so you can give incentives for people to share with their friends and all these kinds of things. But what happened through that whole customer value journey there? You saw when they came in here on the left, they knew nothing about you. And then we sped them out on the far side there and they're now raving fans of your business who are telling everybody about you. So this is what you need to be focusing on when you're doing your e-commerce campaign. Sound good so far? Get a little louder, yeah? yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Okay, so this is what I really wanna dial in with you today right now. I wanna talk to you about this aware stage right now because a lot of people get this wrong. I can't tell you how many times I see people get this wrong and I spend a lifetime mentoring and coaching and helping people get this right. And really when you think about it, at the awareness stage, you're gonna spend money on ads like, who here thinks Facebook doesn't work for their business, right? I would stay in Charlotte an extra day and run your campaigns for you and show you that Facebook will work for your business if I had an extra day, <laughs> <laughs> right? But the truth is, usually people are just spending a little bit of money on Facebook ads, getting a little traffic in there, nothing's happening. And they're like, shucks, Facebook doesn't work for my business. It's a really draining feeling when you invest in ads and nothing happens, right? So we really really need to focus in on owning a niche. We wanna know a specific customer segment and their specific problems and talk about how you can specifically solve them and get them to the promised land. And we can never spend enough time on that. All right, to illustrate my point, we're here at the Shopify meetup. This is me standing over there. This is everybody else kind of sitting on the chair. When you heard about this event and we were gonna talk about e-commerce sales, what did you think that we were gonna be talking about here today? How to get them? What, what, what do you think? How to, them. How to increase them? What do you think that is? Conversions. conversions? So like on-site conversions? What do you think we're going to talk about? Approach. Right approach. Right approach. Anyone else? Strategy. Strategy? Okay. Strategy is good. Did anyone think I was going to talk about email marketing and Shopify apps and yeah. Facebook advertising? Yeah? I'm seeing a lot more not, not, nodding, right? Okay. So I want to address the elephant in the room right now. Okay. <laughs> So let's just pretend there's this elephant. There is an elephant in the room right now. I'm going to address it right now. But if this, if I was sitting here talking about Shopify strategies and all of a sudden an elephant showed up in the room, would you guys be paying attention to me anymore? What would you be paying attention to? The elephant, right? Okay, so that's the truth. It's like everybody's kind of competing for your customer's attention and people can steal your customer's attention away really easily, right? So let's pretend, okay, so we know that all attention's on the elephant. Let's pretend now that Facebook and Snapchat show up in the back. There's like a little back entrance. They're hanging out at the back. Where, where do you think people's attention are going to go now? Still the elephant or Facebook, Snapchat? 
Honestly, I think it's still the elephant, okay? <laughs> so, so I think it's still the elephant right now because no one really knows what they're doing back there. Who cares? Facebook and Snapchat just showed up at the back, right? So all attention is still on the elephant. It's pretty hot here in Charlotte compared to Canada where I come from and it's still snowing, right? So what if like the air conditioning system broke down in here? It would be pretty wildly hot. Elephant is sweating now. Everybody's getting really hot, right? And then all of a sudden, Facebook and Snapchat now have this bright idea to put up a sign that says ice cold water. Now, who's getting all the attention in the room? Facebook and Snapchat are, okay? And the reason is because they are understanding the very specific pain point that this very specific audience is deeply in facing right now, right? So there's gonna be a lot of people competing for your customer's attention. Not only your competitors, but everything else that your customer buys is competing for your customer's attention. So when we think about the awareness stage of this journey, this is about interruptive advertising. Anyone heard that term, right? So interruptive marketing, it's any form of marketing that interrupts the consumer attention and directs it towards your message. These are things like billboards, TV commercials, online ads. These are all interruptive marketing. People came to do something else, but you get in front of them with a message that speaks their pain point and all of a sudden they're gravitating towards whatever you were saying, right? So people do not go to Facebook and Snapchat to buy adhesive industrial things, but they're on Facebook. The people that buy those are on Facebook, right? So they don't go there to buy it. But if you were like, hey, we know about this very specific problem that this very specific niche has and we solve it, all of a sudden they're gonna forget about the photos that they were looking at and they're gonna go check that out, right? So remember, everyone is competing for your customer's attention. The only way to stand out and not be tuned out, we need to agitate your customer's pain points, their pain gain and passion points in your content and show how your product or service is a vehicle for the transformation they desire. And I can't tell you how important this stuff is. At Merchant Mastery, we do have this coaching program. I meet with Shopify stores every week. For the last year, we didn't have a coaching call on the, like the customer avatar and the pain points. And I reintroduced it this year because I'm like, you guys are skipping over this stuff and it's the most important thing. And I know because I've ran a lot of ads in my career. And this is the thing I always depend on is nailing down this interruptive stuff. All right, so, so far so good? Okay, so tool number one, and you get, you're gonna actually be able to implement this stuff if you're, if you're listening and taking notes. The first tool that you wanna be thinking about is a customer avatar canvas. You want to build a profile of your perfect customer. Has anybody here done that? Okay, so I can't tell you how many times I see people also ignore this step and they say, oh, you know, I know my customer. I don't need to write this stuff out. This is just, you know, this is just a waste of time. And I always just would challenge those people and I'd say, but do you really? Let's document this stuff. So this is the tool that we use. One of my other favorite tools from our friends at Digital Marketer. You basically want to fill out this customer avatar canvas based on the perfect type of customer that you want to attract. Who here has multiple customer segments that you could sell to, right? Right, lots of different customer segments, different age groups, different motivations, different reasons that they buy from you. So you wanna build a profile for each of your customer segments and you wanna start with the one that you want the most of, right? Does that make sense? And if you have more than one, you would make more than one. So I'm gonna show you an example of a real customer after canvas that we made for one of our clients back in Canada and where this client is called Ocean Sports, there's not an ocean in sight where we live, kind of, kind of just like here maybe, right? There's no ocean nearby, right? So there's no ocean nearby, but they mostly sell like lake sports. So it's this Lake Dad Daryl. It's, this is the guy with all the cash who goes to the lake and buys the boat and buys all the good gear for the kids, right? So you wanna start with at the very top there with the avatar. You basically what we're doing is we are just picking a segment, Lake Dads, and giving it a name, Daryl, Lake Dad Daryl, easy to remember. So you wanna pick your perfect segment and tack on a name, easy peasy. And then you go to demographics and interests. You wanna know the demographics. What are their most common age, income? Where do they live? How many children do they have? Are they married? You're thinking about these demographics, but then you're also thinking about interests because you're going to use those interests to build interest audiences when you start advertising, right? So when I think about interest for Lake Dad Daryl, I'm like, Okay, if I went into his boat, what other kind of products would I find? If I went into his truck, what kind of products would I find? What kind of brands would I find? If I went into his fridge, what kind of brands would I find? And we're trying to really, really nail it down on what do all the lake dads own, right? And then you want to think about a quote that your customer segment would say. 
and you want to picture your perfect segment is sitting on Instagram, scrolling through Instagram, and all of a sudden a meme pops up. And they're like, oh, like nodding. Aggressive nodding is always my test. If you've, if you've hit it on the head, you want to picture your customer aggressively nodding, not being like, oh, that's a cheesy ad or that's kind of nothing. That You want them nodding. That's like the effect we want with ads. So you want to think of a quote that would get your customer segment nodding and sharing that with all their friends. So for our Lake Dad here, it was, my boat runs on gas, not thanks. Right? Because he's taking everybody out on the boat, costs so much money to fuel this thing. And everybody's like, thanks, Daryl. And he's like, my boat runs on gas, not thanks. It's a funny joke. It was actually so successful for them that they made a bunch of mugs, like tumblers to bring on the boat with this, this quote. But you want to do this because you want to get into your customer segment's mind. And you want to be thinking about what kind of content you can create and write that is going to resonate with them. So never want to skip over any of these exercises. Frustrations and fears, we're going to jump down there to the lower right there or left. And these are the things that he wants to move away from in life, right? So with him, he wants to make sure the kids are having the best quality products. Uh, he doesn't like the cheap gear that needs to be replaced all the time. We're going to skip over to wants and aspirations. He wants happy family moments and memories. He wants to have like the, prefer like the perfect getaway home that he can escape to, right? He's trying to build like a legacy. And then key purchase drivers. This one is incredibly important because these are like, this is like objection handling. When people are on your product page, some people might be like, I get it. They buy right away, but more people will not do that. And they're dealing with objections in their mind. There's a little voice whispering in the back of their head saying, what size is it? When does it arrive? How much does it weigh? What does it look like on me? How does it flow in fabric when I'm walking down in a rainy day, right? Like there's so many objections in your customers' minds. So key purchase drivers are how we document all those objections. The last thing you want on your product page is to not give the customer enough information where they leave your site to go research a product like yours or yours on another site because they couldn't get enough information from you. That is the worst thing. So you really want to make sure that your product page is handling all these objections. For Lake Dad Daryl, it's like the kids guide what the products to buy. They're the decision makers pulling on dad's shirt saying, buy me this brand, that cool thing, this cool thing, right? So we need to know that about him. Kids have the wish list. He needs to look at the lakes. Style options are important. You get it, right? Now, the best part, my favorite thing about this customer avatar, this is why I'm a coach over at Digital Marketers because I'm so obsessed with these tools. I use them for my real business for a very long time. We built a lot of great case studies with these, but this part's my favorite one. This is the before and after grid. Okay, so right now you need to pretend that your customer is in this deep, miserable state. It's terrible. Sometimes I like to call this like hell island and heaven island. And right now they're on hell island. And you want to be thinking about all of the things that are making their life miserable. And it starts with what do they have? So what does our Lake Dad Daryl have? He has outdated, uncool, broken down gear. Right. And how does that make him feel? It makes him feel embarrassed and guilty, right? And what, how does that feeling of embarrassment and guilt impact his average day? Well, now he doesn't go to the lake often and he's not spending quality time with his family, right? And how does that impact his status? Your status is your standing, your, your increase or decrease standing in comparison to your peers. So how are his peers judging him because he never goes to the lake? He's a recluse neighbor. He's reclusive now. What a loser. The good versus evil now. There's often a evil in the world that your product will help overcome. One good example of a good versus evil here is like he never went to the lake. He became a reclusive neighbor and his kids don't get outside and they grow up on Snapchat and they grow up on TikTok and they're stuck to their phone. What a bad situation, right? So this is usually where people get really hung up on their marketing messaging. They talk about the have and the feeling. Hey, we have all these products. It's going to make you feel awesome. But they don't talk about how you should do this more because your kids are going to be stuck on Snapchat if you don't hit the lake. Right? So these are some deeper motives of, as we go down that list. Right? And then what do we have at the after state here? Now we have top quality gear that's trendy and sexy. How does that make me feel proud to show it off? I'm empowered. I'm excited. My average day, I'm at the lake every weekend building, uh, bonding with family and friends. My status now, I'm the guy that everybody at the lake wants to hang out with or be. And good versus evil, kids are healthy, athletic, and they lead to more people being healthy too. 
right? Okay, so that's pretty cool. You guys kind of get where I'm going with this content here. So now here's the groundbreaking part is that, okay, so put your hands up again if you've built a customer avatar before. Did you do anything with it? Anybody? Yeah. Okay, awesome. I like this guy in the back. Okay, but most people don't do anything with it. And I, I've, I've like fought this battle for a long time of people not really doing anything with it. But this is the simplest thing you could do is eventually we're gonna launch an ad experiment in my presentation. I'm gonna take you all the way to launching a Facebook ad experiment. And when you launch a Facebook ad experiment, every Facebook ad that does well speaks to a big idea or transformational state of your customer segment. So when you create an ad, it needs to be built around an angle. What angle are you gonna take with this ad, right? There's a million different angles you can take for your products. Wear this apparel to the post-COVID launch party. Wear this thing on a summer day with your kids. You know, there's like a million and one different angles that you could take for your product. I don't care what product it is, there's a million. And if I had an extra day, we could sit around and do a million different angles. But all you need to do is pick out three to five from your avatar. So we would just pluck out three to five different little ad angles, right? What are, what are three to five little good ones here? Get your kids off Snapchat and hit the lake. That was a pretty good one, right? Make memories for friends and neighbors. That's a good one. And show your kids you're cool. That's pretty cool too, right? And then when it comes time to create an ad, you're gonna build it around these angles. And I'm gonna to talk to you about stacking those offer attributes that I mentioned earlier on. All right, so this is kind of what a worksheet would look like. We would document it here. So far, so good, following along. Okay, so, so far we were just talking about your customer, right? We're like nailing down how we're gonna get their attention, how we're gonna interrupt them browsing through social media and get their attention. Now we need to stack and amplify the big idea with these four offer attributes. So there's four offer attributes that are about you that persuade your customer to buy from you the most often. Okay, and a little acronym there for you to remember is TBIF. Thank Buddha, it's Friday. Okay, and that's not what it really stands for. You'll see in a sec. But the first one, what does T stand for? It stands for transactional attributes. Okay, so these are things like, you know, these transactional attributes are really good for acquiring first-time customers. But this one has to do with price. This is your offer. Does the perceived value of what you're presenting to me outweigh the cost? So oftentimes you'll see things like discounts, gift with purchase offers, free shipping over a certain threshold offers, but that's not the, 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 this transactional attributes aren't discounts. Discounts are a type of transactional attribute. Other transactional attributes would be like scarcity, limited supply, urgency, limited time, right? And also forget all those tactics. What about just justifying your price point? Who here makes like really high-end products that you would never discount? Okay. Did you think so far this presentation wasn't for you? No? <laughs> so I love high-end expensive products because all we need to do is stack enough value that the perceived value still outweighs the cost. One of my favorite um, merchants that I've been working with, and I'll show you one of his like little case study later, he sells really high-end clothing that he manufactures in the States. It's like $300 for his like cheapest thing, but it's like this clothing lasts, like he has customer reviews that are like, I've had this since the nineties, like that kind of quality. And he would never discount it. But you need to explain that in your messaging. You need to say, hey, we know that you buy a new shirt from Carhartt is one of his kind of competitors. We know you buy your Carhartt shirt every six months. You need to replace it all the time. Ours, 10 years. Here's a testimony I'll show you that, right? So we just want to justify the price point and explain. They're actually going to save in the long run, right? So that's transactional attributes. I'm going to show you an example of how to sell jackets with these TBIF, TBIF offer attributes. So if you're selling winter jackets with transactional attributes, like these, these examples here, you're like we're selling winter coats. You usually do this at the end of the season, 70% off clearance sale, right? This is all transactional. That's how you sell a jacket with just transactional. It's just discount, right? B is brand attribute. Brand attribute is how you get people to fall in love with you and stick around, right? This is brand loyalty. And these are things like a cool narrative where your customer can see themselves in the stories that you're telling or they align with your vision and your mission and your brand and your values, right? It's the causes that you support out in the world as well. So let's look at some examples of selling a jacket with brand attributes, cool narratives. 
right? North face jacket, mountain born, city worn. I can see myself in that jacket because I love the city and the mountains. The converse example to teenagers, I can see myself in that jacket because I have the right to test the water and I'm very independent and all that good stuff, right? So those are examples with brand attributes. All right, now let's go to the next one. So the next one is I, influence attributes. And with influence attributes, these are third party endorsements of your products. Okay, so these are things like influencers. Anyone run influencer campaigns? Right? So influencers would be influence attribute, reviews, user generated content, video testimonials, social proof. How many publications was your product featured in? How many stores were you featured in? What associations give you the stamp of approval? What is the size of your social media following? How many customers have you served over a lifetime? These are all examples of social proof. And you want to leverage these in your messaging as well. Okay, so an example of selling jackets with influence. Of course, we got like an influencer one with Adidas. We got Jennifer Aniston being a celebrity endorsement. But my favorite is customer testimonials for influence attributes. And they often work the best. Okay, so the next one here, the last one, TBIF. This is functional attributes. And this is the easiest one. This is the problem that your product actually solves. So how does your product make your customer's life better? It usually serves a specific function based on a, a need-based trigger or desire. I'm traveling to North Carolina. I know it's kind of hot. I better get some new sneakers. And I actually did a few weeks ago, <laughs> right? I'm wearing winter boots still at home. So those are functional attributes. Those are pretty obvious. What kind of problem does your product actually solve? Okay. All right, and then do do do. Okay, so there's the example of the functional. This is like a Polo Ralph Lauren jacket. 11 hours of heated time at full charge, water repellent, immediate heat, heat conducted via carbon printed silver inks, right? All functional, because I'm gonna climb that mountain in the back and I better have a very hot jacket that's gonna keep me warm. The next one, it's just showing the use case. Nordic skiing, hiking, backpacking, snowshoeing, climbing, packable, layerable, all function. Okay, but did you notice with the Polo Ralph Lauren example, they're also talking about brand attributes because they want you to relate to the American Olympic team jacket. So this is a major takeaway. So far of these offer attributes I've been showing you, I've just been showing you how you would use one, but we're often stacking many of them together. Act with these offer attributes, okay? So here's an example. This is a business I've helped through, like, through mentoring, and she's really awesome. She used to be a teacher. Her husband designs these like awesome like graphic tees. He's like an award-winning designer out in Canada. And she got on the phone with me, and she's like, "Scott, I have a really tough time differentiating. Like, how do you differentiate these t-shirts, right?" And I was like, "Oh, well, I know exactly how. Let's get together and talk about it, right?" So we did the TVIF exercise. Okay, so. We came up with some ideas. She could do free shipping over $75. She could do 15% off your first purchase. She could do a buy one, get one free sale. Brand attributes, created and printed in the home studio in New Brunswick, Canada, buying into a new vision of slow fashion and supporting local. It's like causes that she supports. 15 years of design background. We are meticulous with our creations and we wouldn't print on a tee we wouldn't love to wear. Okay, so this is like a founder story. That's a really good brand, brand attribute as well. Because the, the best kind of Shopify entrepreneurs are like, know their product and the product category better than anybody else. Is that anybody here? Yeah, yeah, right? So you could tell founder stories and just showing how dedicated you are to making that product better is a good brand attribute. And they also use ethically sourced materials. So we got some brand attributes. With Influence, he's an award-winning artist. Right? He's won a lot of awards in Canada. And then we just pulled some really good customer testimonials. I literally wear my tea every day, love your stuff. So we got some influence. And then function, buttery soft, buttery soft fabric that holds its fit wash after wash, right? Hand printed with four steps silk screening press with eco-friendly water-based inks and choose from over 25 of the most original graphic tees. So we got all our offer attributes. And a little bit later, I'm gonna show you how to put those together. but I, everybody got a sheet right now when you walked in? You want to pull that out? So I often, like people usually have the hardest time filling out the brand attributes. Do you think you could fill out a couple brand attributes right now? 
And does anybody feel stuck on this and we could solve it right now? Yeah, right there. Okay, so what's your, what's your business? Dog boutique. Uh, so what do you do? It's like you sell clothing for dogs? Yeah. Why did you choose dogs? Okay, okay. And and what else? What else? Do they deserve? You love them, but do they deserve? Dog that use it. So I created it to upcycle dog items. Brand attribute? <laughs> it is. Because you're on a mission right now to make sure that these, you know, sustainability. You're on this mission that you, you want to make sure that these amazing items are being up. What did you say? You just gotta. It's just you just gotta keep it concise with your brand attribute. You just gotta say like, we're we're on a mission. What is your mission? My mission is to give dogs the best clothing. Like first of all, I love dogs. Founder story. You could be a, that could be a founder story. I'm obsessed with dogs. I went out in the world to solve this problem. I searched the highest mountains and the furthest seas to find the best fabrics that are sustainable for these dogs, right? And not only that, I I believe that we shouldn't uh you know like all this fast fashion stuff is impacting the world right. and recycling so i also solve this problem that's like two right there right. Okay. okay and 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 also the other thing is values what kind of like people need to like get to a site and be like yeah this is for me right, right? like it's like culture like people get somewhere and they're like yeah this i could see myself like i see myself in the brand narrative Right. So it's other things too. Like often when I think about brand attributes, like what is your narrative look like? What kind of stories are you going to tell? Anybody else struggling with the brand attributes? I have kind of like it's, it's off and off. Like I struggle with explaining what my brand message is. Um, and I also get lost in the explanation. Like you're so passionate about it. I am, but I just don't talk about everything. <laughs> I, I think like this is why I have this exercise for you, just to keep it really simple. Just put like one in a box. It's, it's kind of like your founder story, your vision, your mission, your values, your, right, your narrative, and just jotting down a couple sentences for each. Can you say that? Yeah, yeah I, I don't have it memorized, but I think it was founder story, mission, vision, values, and your narrative, like the narrative that you're going to tell. Narrative is really important when you work in really specific niches because you want to know what language people use. Anybody else on brand attributes? Feeling good? All right. So I'd encourage you to fill those out. It's a really helpful exercise. The reason I chose brand attributes is because people usually have the hardest time with those ones. So that's why I, I wanted to help you out there. Okay. Let's move to the next one. So to create high converting ads now. So, so far we looked at the customer avatar canvas where you pulled out some big ideas that speak to your customer transformation, right? And then we talked about offer attributes to amplify your big idea. And now we're going to create some ad copy with that stuff. And this is where it's going to get a little bit easier for you to kind of like articulate it and get it out. Okay, all right. Okay, so this is a, a good little worksheet that we usually use when we're creating ads, where we pull our big ideas, our ad angles, we list our offer attributes, and that's what a Facebook ad template looks like. So this is how you go and write a Facebook ad. And you want to list what your angle is at the top, you want to write what your headline is. It's the text that shows up below like in the link. And then you would write your body copy. And then you would write your little news feed description, your call to action, and your creative. Okay, so I went and just did this on my own. I went and like looked up people's ads to see what they were doing. And there's a company called Cotton that is like obsessed with like sustainable cotton. They make like bed sheets, clothing, like anything to do with cotton. And I pulled two ads that they had. One was the big idea was invest in quality products with a purpose. That's like the big idea of this ad. You could see I didn't show the creative yet, right? Because I'm just talking about the copy. So I hid the creative. 
but it's just saying the big idea here is like invest in quality products with a purpose. This Black Friday, invest in quality products with a purpose. So they're, they're talking to those people who are going to resonate with that kind of messaging. We're donating 100% of proceeds from every order this Black Friday up to a quarter million towards building schools in Egypt where our cotton is grown. So that's a lot of brand attribute right there, right? Plus, we'll give you $25 off your next order. Transactional attribute. Down here, basically the same to simplify your everyday collection of better basics, built to last. So it's talking about function and brand. They're always dropping terms like ethically sourced. Right down there, they have free carbon offset shipping. What's, uh, yeah, I'll take questions. Yeah, I don't good. I don't have any data about the hashtags, but I do have an answer for you about the video verse image coming soon. Mm -hmm. But I I got it because there is only one answer, and I'll I'll save it for a second here. Okay, but with this one down here, free carbon offset shipping, they could have just said free shipping. That would have been a transactional attribute, free shipping. But they said free carbon offset shipping. It's yeah. it, it means they're saving the planet with less, right? Like less carbon is being produced or carbon footprint. There you go. You know probably better than I am because maybe, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a way that they put brand and, and transaction in there together. And with uh, this other ad, the big idea was scarcely available, best-selling comforter now available in two hues, right? So sold out not once, not twice, but four times our beloved and best-selling quilted comforter now in two hues. So because they said it was sold out not once, not twice, but four times, that's influence, right? They're saying our customers love it. It's in demand. Now they're saying it's available in two new colors. That's function. Then they got the brand transactional attribute in there. Okay, so this is kind of how you would stack these offer attributes to amplify your big idea of an ad. Alrighty. Now ad creatives. This is what you're going to decide on whether it's going to be video or different images to visualize the ad that you're putting out there. Okay, so when you're thinking about ad creative, you want to visualize the big idea angle transformation. You're going to use video, graphics, images, visualizations, GIFs. Right, you're going to use different formats per platform, and you want to be on brand. You want to think about your voice, color palette, fonts, and logos, and all that good stuff. Okay, so here's the big reveal how do you think Cotton did on their ad creative to visualize these ads? Well, I was a little bit disappointed with their creative, I like their copy so much, but here's what their creative looks like. Right, so I would have loved for this one. Like for this one here, I would have loved to see like the schools in Egypt, kids in Egypt. Did I hear? Yeah, right, right. This one over here. Okay, okay. It's kind of Pinterest worthy. So that one's a little better. Not the biggest fan of this one, but they always make cotton like the, the star of the show in everything that they do. So they're consistent at least with the brand. But that's the idea. Are you kind of getting a sense of how to put together an ad? It's like big idea. Offer attributes, visualize the big idea with creative. Okay. And then these are some examples of some like the best performing ones that our team ran last year. And yeah, go ahead. So what I'm, what I'm going to be talking about, like well, this is what we do. This is what we do. We run little baby experiments on Facebook mm -hmm. with wide net of things. Because the truth is, you don't know what's gonna, what angle is gonna resonate with your audience the most and lead to the most sales ultimately. You don't know. And I'll get to this testing stuff in a sec because this is the secret to it all. But what we do is we validate what messaging is working and then we use it everywhere else, right? We we do a ton with Google. Google, like I have this conversation all the time with people, but Google, it's a higher intent. So you don't necessarily need to interrupt someone's experience and pull them and gravitate them towards your site. You just need to know what keywords they're searching for. That's going to validate what pain they're in and lead to a page that addresses those keywords and that pain point. So it is kind of similar, but I'm talking about like the harder platform. But that to me is we have way more success on in general on Facebook. I wouldn't say we're a Google agency. There's a Google agency who's there back there. He's He's gonna be on the panel later. He, you can ask him about, about Google. Okay. But like literally with, uh, these, these are some of our best performing ones. And this is one that we led with transactional. 
So it's like satisfaction, money back guarantee. That's a good transactional attribute. Lifetime workmanship guarantee. Function, talk about how they're used. Product and use videos. These work really well, right? Transactional, save up to 20%. This is like a brand forward ad from women's apparel clothing store that we work with. And you have great taste, finding the right piece could look good and be comfortable. It could be a daunting task. That's narrative. The customer can see themselves in that narrative, right? And then they have product image carousel. They talk about the function, what kind of product it is. Pretty straightforward. And then this is a influence first ad, just leads with a customer testimonial. So it's like the product delivers incredible stretch, anti-wrinkle, moisture wicking. It, it included function in the testimonial, which was kind of nice, right? And then product and use image, influence, five stars, no transactional, so no discounts, and it's still kicking butt, which is awesome. The next one over here is another client of ours, Camel ADV. They sell like aftermarket ADV upgrades to your fun little toys there. Function, product and use, that's it. Converts really high. It's really good for these niche, high ticket niche. All right, let's see, there we go. So this is kind of how we approach the whole thing. So far, we pulled our big ideas. We flushed out our offer attributes. Now we've got to decide on the creative in our, the last step. So you usually don't just want one creative per angle. You want to try a few. You don't know which is going to work the best. All right. So when you're thinking about creative, research what others are doing. You don't just need to like reinvent the wheel. Brainstorm ideas for video, graphics, images, and don't get hung up on trying to overproduce everything. Does anybody overthink that? And trying to overproduce everything? We, we work with a company that we met and they had all this like venture capital funding out in Los Angeles. They're like, here's a $60,000 video we made and we want to use it in an ad. We didn't, it didn't take us long. We're like, this ad is not going to perform, right? We're like, can you get like a cell phone video of somebody delivering the product and getting the customer's reaction? And they did that. And guess which one performed better? That one, right? So you could use iPhones and then test everything. So that leads me into one of my last sections here, which is about testing, right? We, how, how much stuff did I just cover? It's actually a really refreshing experience going through that and brainstorming. Who's my perfect customer? What are my offer attributes? Let's pair these things. And it takes out all of that like pressure to knock it out of the park on your first try. Like a lot of the time people are like, okay, hey, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna launch a Facebook ad. I got two. They're gonna be amazing. They put a bunch of money in and it's just such a, a letdown. But really what we like to do is run a broad experiment. Okay. So what we're trying to do is validate the best combination of copy, creative and audience that works for your store. When you run an experiment like this, when I pulled those cotton ads, that's how many they had going at the same time. They had tons talking about different things. They had copy with different images, same images with different copy. Like they're trying a big variety of things to test what is working. And what we usually like to do is we would like to take like three ad angles, pair each one with three ad creatives and test all of those against three audiences. So that's like, 27 ads, right? Like three bucks an ad. Yeah, right? Small little experiment. Spend $850 to $1,500 in 10 days. And what happens, you're running 27 ads, and I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if, if this is wrong, I will fly back out to Charlotte and you could shame me back to Canada or something, right? But I guarantee you, if you run this kind of experiment, you're going to have a spectrum of really horrible performers, okay performers, and maybe some outstanding ones that were leading to sales. And this is the biggest problem. This, this, hopefully there's some really strong takeaways from this today because we need to experiment. Like if we only launch one or two, what if those were the horrible ones out of the wide experiment, right? We need a wider experiment. I would even prefer if we had five angles with five images each against five audiences. That's 125 ads, that's what we do, right? And then you have like this big vast net and it starts getting feeling really good when some of those are leading to sales, right? So test everything. You want to try video? Try video. Try still images. Try, try product videos with a white, white background. Those convert like crazy sometimes, right? That's a common question we get. So... I would usually start like, and some of the people I've worked with for a long time who have like starting to crush it on their own, they get like 
so hungry for more avatar info. They're like, I'm out of avatar info. I need more like, I need more ammunition for my campaign. I need more stuff. So you might want to start broad on your first experiment where it's like one avatar. And, and usually we would try like open audiences, look like audiences, interest audience. And then what happens is you're like, whoa, those ones were terrible. This was, was good. And then you take the good one and you do variations of that one. So you want to always assume you can do better. And you're kind of in the background putting like 10% of your ad budget into new experiments all the time. Because you'll get more winners that way. Right? But then you might say, okay, we've, this avatar is not working. Let's pull, let's pull another avatar. Like you just keep pulling. Like you should be testing. Like once you get it going and it's like sustainable and you're getting a return, at least covering your ad costs, you're going to want to pull from other avatars. Okay, I'm nearly, oh no, I'm gonna show you a little case study. So remember that good old friend of ours, uh, Black Hair, the name of a rabbit? It's like, uh, the, the, they did the big ideas. They did the offer attributes, right? This is the ads that they created without my help. I just helped them with the offer attributes in the customer avatar canvas. And she had a breakthrough moment where she was like, I couldn't differentiate my t-shirts. And now I got all these ideas and she's like an advertiser and she's writing all these ads. Like original graphic tees designed silkscreen and made to order brand attribute featuring original designs by Canadian artist Nick Chase influence attribute. We wouldn't print on a tee we wouldn't wear that's brand attribute. Uh, free shipping transactional attribute influence attribute they got everything covered in this ad. Like everything we talked about is covered in that ad. This one's just big on transaction buy one get one. This one right here I asked them, they were like we have this force part silk screening press in our home studio. I'm like, can you show do you have a video showing how that thing's used. Because people love process videos, seeing how things are made, seeing how things are used, right? So, and then the last one, it was like the dad angle, the dad tee, old dad clothes aren't what they used to be. Got five like influence attributes there, all testimonials, transactional, 15% off. Which one do you think performed the best? They all did well. There was one that was the best though. It was a video. It was a video. And this is what happened in two weeks. Okay, so like she's used to doing like under $1,000 in sales. And she launched these ads and emailed me. And she hit like over 30K and was like, I'm paradoxically excited, but scared. <laughs> because now she's got all those other e-commerce problems to deal with. Fulfillment, inventory, yeah. right? <laughs> Yeah, it's a good problem to have, right? And th this is consistent across all product categories. This is that apparel guy I was telling you about, the really high ticket apparel guy. He, he wasted thousands of dollars on an agency and was like, I'm depressed. I don't want to do this. And I was like, don't hire an agency. He was trying to hire our agency. We're like, no, we'll go do the mentorship. We'll get you going. He's getting over, you know, 40K a month now. He's got high ticket stuff, never discounts. Kitchenware company, zero to over 80,000 pounds. Uh, Uzer's British, you like the little pound reference, Uzer? <laughs> yeah, so these are just like mentored from the ground up. And then other like bigger companies that we're like working with, we, like I said, at our agency, we're, uh, we're working with companies that are usually, ooh, ooh, hello? I think this thing is like, you guys are gonna have fun with this on the panel. These companies usually are already doing like 100K a month. Same stuff that I just showed you, right? That's all we did. It's just like test, 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 get it right. And then you're off to the races, right? This, these guys would like went from 200 to 800 in less than a year doing this. And it's easy to scale. Who would spend more money on ads if they were getting sales, <laughs> right? So that, that's how you do it. It's not like you just keep increasing as your KPIs are consistent, it's safe, right? So the last thing I'm going to talk about, and then I'm going to hand it off to these panelists, is just campaign assets along the customer journey. You want to use your validated copy and creative everywhere else in your campaign. Okay. So we want to validate here and use everywhere else there. So that means we're going to use it in our pop-up displays. She's got a transactional attribute, of course, for a welcome offer, but also a brand attribute. Thanks for supporting small-scale makers. Right? This one over here is brand ocean sports established in Canada in 1975 transactional. We look at uh, retargeting ads. We're going to, I'll just skip over this one. We talked enough about ads, but let's look over at like product page examples. So product page, you're going to talk about brand here. You're going to talk about function, influence, transaction, 
all the stuff that you're validating, you're kind of using everywhere else. It's beautiful. And this is a good example of just like an email that's function. Your ultimate office to water watch. I love that one because it's the average or the average day of the customer avatar. Right? I go from the office to the water and you can wear this watch doing it. So that's how you have a high converting e-commerce campaign. All right. And I have something really awesome for you guys that you're going to really appreciate. So I have some free training I'm going to give you. And it's a bunch. <laughs> All right. So the first thing, let's see if I can get this going. So I have a two-hour training that I did that is going to get deeper into this brand positioning training, how to attract and convert your ideal customers with hyper-specific content and offers and stand up from your competitors in the process. That includes building your ideal customer avatar. I'll get you all these handouts. Nail down your four offer attributes, right? Create your ideal offer that customers would silly, be silly to pass up on. This is a tough one. And I'm looking over at the high ticket guy because I love these high ticket challenges, right? The, the most important thing, an offer is not simply discounting your products. You're going to lose price integrity really quickly if you do that. It's all about a great offer builds perceived value in the mind of your customer that is greater than the price. And I can show you how to do that, right? And I also, this is like my life's work here. I built a guide to 54 proven offer or e-commerce offers along the customer journey. So different ones you can use at different times. Okay, the second thing, and this one's gonna, oh yeah. And then also in that will be a step-by-step -step instruction on how to create ads using the avatar and offer attributes. Okay, and then you guys are gonna love the clicker too. Oh, actually, you guys are gonna have a clicker. Okay, five-hour Facebook ad training. Okay, so this thing is like, I'm gonna show you how to launch a, a, like a testing campaign. So this is a playbook of these Facebook strategies, easy to implement for beginners at any budget. I'm gonna show you how to test, validate, scale winning ads on Facebook, launch a wide experiment using a small budget to test multiple variations based on the campaign KPIs that I'll show you in there. Actually, my business partner, Simon, we both did this together and he'll show you that. <laughs> but based on the KPIs, how to validate your losing mediocre no outstanding ad combinations eliminate the losing ads, scale the outstanding ones, and we'll give you our guide to our agency's 29 highest converting Facebook ads from 2021. Does that sound good? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then also, you should also join our uh, Facebook group because my business partner, Kieran over here, who's going to be hosting the panel, he and I host a lot of trainings in there, like usually twice a month. Same with some other people from our team. We do lots of trainings in there. Other successful e-commerce entrepreneurs come in there. It's just facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash merchant mastery. And I can tell you right now, this is somebody who implemented this brand positioning one I was talking about. I just want to say how incredibly thankful I am. Uh, last month we hit, okay, wait. Uh, before starting this, we might have sold an item or two, maybe 100 a month. Last month we hit 5,000. This month we hit 10,000. So it's like, you just got to follow these steps. The five-hour Facebook ads training. Someone said, I can't thank Scott and Simon enough. Uh, in the past, I'd stumbled around doing some ads. It would be wasting my time. Now I've hit... I figured out three audiences in one ad set that are bringing in over three year ads. This woman's over 60 years old. I love her. All right. And then the, this is just like from the free Facebook training. This is a member in there who's just like, hey, I implemented everything you guys are talking about Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Just wait till that season comes. We'll show you guys some really cool stuff with that. But she's like, I had my biggest Black Friday ever at $3,400 on brand new. So I really encourage you guys to actually do the training and you can join the Facebook group. You can hit me up in there. I'll come talk to you and I spend a lot of time in there. I'm really passionate about learning, as Garrett said. And if you want the training, just there's a QR code. You'll meet with our marketing team, Megan and Sarah. This is an enrollment call. So if, if, if there's something else that I talked about here today and you're like, I want to learn more about mentorship or your agency, just ask them and then they would send you along to someone else. But the call with Megan and Sarah is literally just to show you how to get the most out of the training, see where you're at, tell you exactly what you should be prioritizing. I'll be like a 15-minute call. And... That's about it. Is any any questions, guys? Before I wrap up here. This is like a one of Kieran's favorite topics. Sorry, I'm pointing out Kieran as he's like, but no, no, no. I'm going to tell you right now. But he talks about it a lot. It's like you don't want you never want to use creative that is the wrong avatar. Right. So like we, we have, I was talking to the skincare company. Who's the skincare over here. Right. I was talking to the skincare company and she had like 20 year old, like influencer kind of women in her photos. And we were like, Hey, let's look at your customer data. Like who's buying. And everyone was like over 40, 50. 
And it's like, please let's change those photos, right? So I think it's okay to use video or photo. And I think both will resonate. It's more important that you're just catering to that segment, whatever the like format of the content it is, just cater to them. Yeah, you bet. Any other questions in the back? This, I, I don't want to tell, I'm going to tell you, but I don't want to because I feel like they just got so lucky. Like they were spending like a hundred, like they started off spending like $20 a day. You know, they never went over like 50. And even when I was telling them spent $200 a day, they were a little scared to do that. And they didn't do that right away because they were dealing with inventory and all this fulfillment issues. They literally couldn't keep up with like the, the orders. They weren't used to that level of activity. But my advice to them still, and I know Monica, I meet with her a lot. And I'm just like, you got to just crank that. Like when you have those winners, you, right? You just want to like crank up that spend. But the, the, the important takeaway that I want you guys to walk away with, like, I'm, I, would, I just want you to like, be really careful with ad spend. I hope everyone is already. But you don't want to just like put, like gamble. You don't want to just gamble on one and be like, this one's going to knock it out of the park. You just want to put a little bit of spend on many. And then look for these daily KPIs and that training We'll show you all the KPIs. We'll show you how to set up your ads in Facebook. We'll show you which audiences to choose. We'll show you which creatives to use. So everything is in that training, right? Like you could just take that training and be and coast for like a year, probably. And then if you, right? It's a real uh, counter to the Facebook. You hear that broad spectrum. What you're really trying to do is not find the winner to begin with. You're trying to find your loser and get the results there. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right, everybody. Thanks so much for, uh, yeah, or. Yeah, well, it's, we, we have a training portal. So we just gotta like get you a login. We'll show you how to navigate it. We'll show you like, th there's some of them are really long. We'll get you all the worksheets. We'll kind of like give you a little orientation on how to, how to use it. And actually any other questions before I wrap up? I think I got a couple back there. Oh, on the sheet, there's the QR code is on that sheet too. Yeah, we thought it was like the day and the age of QR codes working. Everyone knows how to use them now, right? So, <laughs> did you have one in the back? I'm very happy breaking even. I'm very excited. Yeah. What what happened? Well, let me tell you. Hey, let me tell you. Right. So. I'm all I want to do. Remember my customer journey. All you want to do is break even on acquisition where the real opportunity is lifetime value. But, but we could get, we have clients doing, I had, we ran a Snapchat campaign for like $16,000 and generated a quarter million. It was like a 16 row S. So I'm excited because I'm, you know, we got some momentum, but it's not scale. It's not scalable to keep high row S's like that. It's not. Once you start spending like 50, hundred K a month, which we do on campaigns, it starts to really dwindle down that ROAS and you just really need to optimize every one of these little stages along the way, right? So I, I like the high ROASs, but they're just not forever. I like, I like three, like if we could keep three forever, that's good. But I care more about reselling t-shirts. That's a really good lifetime value product. Yeah, TikTok, we're actually, um, we're actually putting together an entire training on TikTok ads right now. We already have one on Snapchat. So if, if you talk to Megan or Sarah on a call, anyone, just ask them for the Snapchat training or, or TikTok. We might even already have it. So we have that too. But like we love, actually, the reason I kept saying Snapchat a bunch of times is because we're knocking out of the park there right now. Like as soon as we heard that Facebook had any issue with these regulations, we immediately diversified. This is like a year and a half, two years ago that we were like, let's go hard on Pinterest, hard on TikTok, Snapchat, Google, YouTube, Instagram. Well, Instagram I, is like Facebook to me. Right, because it's the same business manager. Uh, Etsy, that's not our space. No, because we like Shopify because you get to own your customer relationship, right? So Amazon, although we have clients and people in our groups and all these in our community that they sell on Amazon and Etsy, we prefer the Shopify route where you get to build your customer lifetime value, own that data, control the reselling process. Because it's like once you build a little platform, on shop the hardest part about shopify is building that initial platform getting the first initial little sales in 
But once you have a big enough email list, validated your messaging, you've done all that hard work and you have like, you know how to knock it out of the park with your messaging, emails, all that. You get to resell every time you send out an email, it generates sales. Yeah. For Shopify? We have a, on our website, we have a pay what you can, how to build a Shopify store. Perfect. You can pay five bucks. Okay. It's an eight hour training, right? So we're really tra- like, we'll yeah, you could, hit, you could hit them for that too. Yeah. Or just merchantmastery.io. And then there's like a courses thing and there's like a free, or it's like pay what you can. Yeah. But you can ask Megan Sarah that it's like, this will be like a 10 minute call. Pin everything, but I'm struggling to fit the business line. Um, do you treat Pinterest, or would you recommend that we treat Pinterest the same way that we treat Facebook as far oh. as the ads? Okay. Oh, yeah. Re- the repeat the question. You asked. You asked. Do you recommend using Pinterest? Yes. Yeah, so the same way that you just gave us a full example with you know doing ads in Facebook, for example. Do you suggest that we treat it it's, the same way? It's the- the- it's different. So interruptive, remember I was talking about interruptive? Everybody remembers that term? Go home, remember that term? Interruptive platforms are like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. Search platforms are like YouTube, Google. I'm just looking at my Google guy. Hopefully I'm not saying anything bad about Google. Google, YouTube, but also Pinterest, right? Pinterest is like the most searched images in Google image search, right? So like we want to be doing search-based strategies that are, that are different. Today, I know I was talking a lot about interruptive advertising, but we are also doing some awesome things with Pinterest. We're actually doing a meetup out in Nashville in later this month, in March 31st. And I have one of our top advertisers on our team come out and I think she's teaching on Pinterest and TikTok. So like, we'll also be live streaming that. So join the Facebook group and you can watch all that. We're going to just like, we have like steady, steady education, free stuff coming out. Anyone else? All right, awesome. I just really want you guys to go and crush it. Go and get some awesome case studies. Hit me up in the Facebook group and tell me how it's going. I will actually spend some time. If someone was like, hey, Scott, we were in Charlotte. You said you would take a look at this. I will do that if you remember. But I'll close on that note so not everybody does it. All right, thanks so much, guys. Perfect. Thank you, Scott. Um, that was awesome. So I'm just going to let the panel kind of set up if anyone wants to grab some drinks or anything. I know some people are standing. There is seats still at the front. Um, so you guys are welcome to come to those ones, um, kind of fill it up. But I'm just going to do a quick shout out to our sponsors. So Shopify is one of our sponsors um, who helps put on these events, um, as well as Privy. So uh, Privy is the e-commerce marketing platform for online brands that need to grow sales now. Um, it's the number one rated sales app in Shopify with over 18,000 five-star ratings. Um, in the follow-up email, you will get a link to sign up for a 15-day free trial as well. So I just want to thank both of those. Um, and if you are posting anything on Instagram, if you can tag us at, at Merchant Mastery, I'd love to be reposting those throughout this event. Um, but otherwise, yeah, we'll just get the panel up here. And then Garrett will be back to introduce the panel. All right, excellent. All right, everyone. All right, all right, all right. We're going to keep it rolling here. We're going to keep it rolling. Uh, I, I know there's several people over here getting drinks, going to the restroom. There's plenty of gorgonzola over there. Go enjoy it. Okay. Uh, but also, we're, we're going to keep the, the learning going. Uh, how, how, how many of y'all learned something from the last talk? All right. How many of y'all are going to implement something from the last talk? Okay. That's the real question. Okay implementation you know the education without implementation is a uh, uh, entertainment you know and uh, I, I'm glad y'all are having a good time tonight I know I sure am uh, you know I'm, I'm gonna let those people go go ahead and get some more drinks but we are gonna get this uh, th- this panel started uh, I do want everyone to, uh, to you know to give a round of applause whenever these people come on up Ooh, that's hot that's real hot. Uh, I, as Scott said, I'm going to wish everyone good luck. Uh, panel, if you can hear this, this mic, uh, pay attention to this mic. 
and this one will pick you up because it's a good mic. It's our mic. We brought it. Um, <laughs> pay attention. To this one, silver is going to be your most important. And uh, black is going to pick it up because we paid a lot of money for it. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I want to start. I see Monique heading up right now. Uh, and I am a, a Southern gentleman myself. I'm from Texas. Um, and, uh, and so I say ladies first. So Monique Morrison, come on up and you gentlemen can hang on back while I introduce Monique Morrison, Monique, a good friend of mine, also a coach inside of our coaching program with digital marketer, along with Scott Cunningham. Um, and so, uh, these are two of my uh, good friends and colleagues, um, very, uh, well-educated in the, um, uh, in the digital marketing space, they educate others. Um, and Monique has recently undertaken her own uh, e-commerce empire. Uh, so uh, very excited. She can uh, uh, pass those learnings on to you as well. But uh, she has years, uh, over a decade of experience uh, in, this, uh, in this space. So uh, everyone, Monique Morrison. She came all the way down from Canada as well. We'll follow up with Mr. Thomas McMillan, your local marketer here. Uh, uh, Thomas is from the Charlotte area. He has been he has worked with a brand such as Lowe's. He runs a triple digit group uh, here in local uh, here locally once again, and uh, and and he is one smart cookie, although not that smart because he's an Aggie. So um, you know, uh, does that's just a little you know. Yeah, well, you know, y'all are SEC, right? Uh, but, you know, if, if y'all ever need uh, somebody to talk to uh, locally, you know, you want to bend somebody's ear. I know this guy's always down to, to have a, a cup of joe or something. Uh, so y'all should go ahead and look up Thomas McMillan. Find him on LinkedIn. Anywhere else they can connect with you, Thomas? Yeah, LinkedIn, good place. So. At, uh, yeah, Fire Fridays, you're going to find them uh, on LinkedIn, creating content every Friday. So uh, go in there and say, what's up? Uh, last up here. Well, not last up because I still got Kieran, but, um, you know, I got Uzair Karawala. <laughs> Is that, did I get it right? I try. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. A uh, round of applause. And like I said, good luck with these microphones. And Scott said that as well. Uh, but Uzair came all the way. He traveled the furthest out of anyone here. Anyone further than London? Okay, I didn't think so. Um, Uzair uh, is a, um, a PPC master. Uh, he has been uh, crushing as far as ranking. I heard a question earlier about video. If you want to know about video, this guy knows a thing or two about video. He is going to, uh, of, of course, try to help y'all uh, educate y'all on how to use it, use it successfully, use it to get ranked, um, use it to sell more. Okay. So uh, that that's what he does. Um, SF digital. Yes. I know all this stuff on the back of my, my head or, you know, like it, it's awesome. Okay, cool. Well, uh, everyone who's there, uh, thank you for, for coming across the pond here. Uh, really appreciate it. And last but not least, um, uh, Kirian is uh, Scott's business partner uh you know scott i i, I see as the um you, you know he he's always pushing the boundary he's trying uh new stuff kirian is the the rock i i feel you you're the person you 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 make sure that you're profitable that you're 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 uh you, you're running tried and true tests that you, you know you're going with the su successful um outcomes and 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 oh you know ultimately successful here uh, as uh, Socialite and, uh, and and many other ventures. So uh, without further ado, Kieran will be leading this uh, panel. So I'll go ahead and hand it over to him. Hey, Garrett, thank you very much. All right, why does this mic keep cutting in and out? Does anybody know why? Does anybody know why? All right, how's the evening going for everybody so far? Yes, yes. You guys are gonna go out tomorrow and you're gonna do one thing. Just one thing, take one of your learnings from tonight from Scott's session, implement it. Once you do that first implementation, do the second, then the third. Whenever we see somebody saying, my advertising is not working, it's because they haven't tried the 30 things that he showed you. There's literally 30, 35 things, and then the combinations of it that will give you that kind of lift. So I really want to harp on that. Make the testing and the implementation, the application a habit. Habits are what win wars. And it's a bit of a war out there. 
All right. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I wanted to finish up on uh, Scott's angle, and I'm going to see if you guys agree with me. Marketing is theater. Marketing is theater. Nod, if you agree, marketing is theater. And the thing with theater, the thing with theater is that you need a great story on the screen, right? A great story has great moments. Am I right? The movie has great moments. In the case of your marketing, those are the same things as great messages. And the messages are bound with a big idea. So here's what you have. Marketing is theater. The big idea, the key messages that come out of that big idea, and the narrative you put on the screen of your marketing theater. Mix in a little T-B-I-F, and you've got a winning campaign. Am I right? Okay, that's how you crush it. Okay. Welcome everybody, I'm Kieran Therakin and uh, I am the senior partner at uh, Socialite Communications and Merchant Mastery. And the only reason why that is, is because I've got 20 years on, uh, on Scott and Simon. So I've got a little bit more gray hair than that. And they use the word senior in a very liberal form. Are you senior? Okay, so I'm really pleased to have you three up on the, uh, on the stage with me today. We're gonna start off with some real easy Easy lob question. Very first thing. In 2021, what were some of the most profound changes you've seen in the e-commerce field? We'll start with you, Monique. Uh, so Ooh, you did that. It's me. It's not the mic. Uh, so <laughs> there a speaker. Go ahead. Go ahead. Try, try. I think oh, it's there's a speaker it's right here. Oh, speaker. you know what? Come, yeah, there's come over here. Let's, let's move up, move you up front a little. Come on up here, you guys. Get away from that speaker. There we go. Try it again. Hello. <laughs> uh, so I would say in 2021, the biggest change for me, because I've always been a super big Facebook and Instagram ads advocate, I have switched a lot, not a lot, not 100%, but Google shopping ads have been blowing it out of the water for me. Like I have been growing exponentially uh, in my e-com business and um, a lot of the ad spend that I've been growing and investing back in has been uh, Google, Google shopping ads. I still love Facebook and I still love Instagram uh, and, and I love TikTok too. TikTok has been working really well, but my biggest ROIs have been from Google shopping. And I don't know if that's true for everyone else in the room as well. So a lot of folks have, everybody has e-commerce stores. Does anybody use e-commerce to drive to your store, your actual store in here? Like, do you have a brick and mortar store with your actual e-commerce? So that's my big thing in 2021 for all of you is all of the local stores, are also adding on e-commerce. If they didn't add it in 2020, they added it in 2021, or now they're figuring, starting to figure it out. And so now you got even more competition. So that's, that's a big thing that, that I'm seeing. They're all asking about it. Uh, for me, uh, for the last year or two, video, um, and as Monique said, Google shopping, but if you want to put fuel on the fire, run shopping ads on YouTube with, through your Merchant Center feed. And that really does work wonderfully well as well. Um, video is hands down, you know, one of the best channels right now for you to build trust. And once you, people know you, like you and trust you, you're going to sell more, as simple as that. Is there, just keep the uh, mic. Yeah. Is it okay if I yell? Are you okay with that? Okay, we're gonna yell. I'm going to see a live stream is going to pick up that. Uh, yeah, we need that. All right, fine. I'll use the mic. <laughs> All right. Uh, here we are, though, in 2022. A lot of things have happened the last six weeks, four weeks, you know, $8 a dollar uh, gallon gas, right? And I wasn't seeing that one coming. I didn't see Putin coming either. But in the field of e-commerce, 
what are you seeing that may be different in 2022 that wasn't as readily apparent in 2021? For me, I look at the big two, Amazon and eBay. Whatever, whatever they do, just follow them blindly. Don't try to be clever, reinvent the wheel. They've spent millions and millions and millions testing everything. So the things which I look at is white background, black text. Amazon used to have just images, you know, one main image and then four or five images on the right, on the left. Now they've started to put video on there as well. So that gives you an idea as to where you need to take your um, e-commerce stores. Start putting videos and it's so easy to create now. You don't need expensive equipment. As Scott said earlier on, iPhone, bit of you know, video light, which would cost you about hundred dollars, if not less, and a bit of microphone, and get started. Speaking of microphones, <laughs> uh, I, I think we're live streaming this, right? So live streaming. So I think you'll see even more QVC esque live streaming in your community. So you're pulling, pulling people together in your Facebook groups. You're pulling people together in your YouTubes. If you have personality, charisma, can get people on board with your story. I heard some cool stories earlier. The upcycle thing, that was pretty cool. Like you can get some people to buy at the end of that, at that live, of, of that live stream. That'll just be, you know, you creating content to repurpose later, but you're getting some sales. So to continue kind of what Uzair said about watching Amazon and how they do things, for a long time, merchants felt this responsibility to have to always offer free shipping. And as you know, shipping costs are rising. And you'll notice that with Prime, well, Prime isn't free two-day shipping anymore. You already know that you have this expectation that it's going to be longer and that there, it's, it's not the same as the two free-day shipping. And so what I've been noticing is a change in consumers not necessarily expecting free shipping on a certain threshold. So we've been kind of testing doing uh, between offering free shipping at a threshold and then offering a free gift that someone gets to choose between certain product set that is equivalent to shipping, but the cost for you is much lower. And so the value there is much higher. People get choice, uh, but you're still giving the same uh, perceived value as free shipping. Uh, if there are questions from the audience, we'll take them at any point in time, right? What do we got? Okay, way in the back there. Uh, to be honest, I'm 100% Shopify. Uh, I, I, I do, I have clients that sell on Amazon, but um, I, I don't know if I'm actually the right person to talk about um, that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in, in, in every, everyone that I, I, I'm working with, they, they may have stuff on Amazon, but they're, I would say they're using multiple channels uh, from that perspective. So they're still getting plenty of sales uh, and they're driving ad dollars, et cetera, uh, on their side, email marketing from that perspective. Maybe I'm not 100% following. The issue is that people go to Amazon to raise dollars. They may not be, they may be searching your website, they may be trying to follow up on you, they may have clicked over to some Facebook or check you out. But if you're on Amazon, you're there to buy. So are you selling both on Amazon as well as on your website? Yes. Okay. So if your website helps you sell on Amazon, do you want that? 
sure that everybody is around you in the shop spot. True, true. But then they will go to Amazon and they'll search for your product and buy from there because they know they've got the account and the free shipping or whatever they've got. And because Amazon is such a big brand, uh, it's very difficult to move the consumer away from them. But what you can do is to offer something which you don't offer on Amazon so that they buy from your website and not from Amazon. The other thing which I've noticed in the last six to seven months, we get at least three to four clients every month. The vendors want to move away from Amazon because they're sick and tired of all the terms and conditions and the fees and everything. So this, this is a great opportunity. And as Monique said, that you know, free shipping is not there on Amazon and people are happy to pay a minimal or a small shipping fee. So you get them away. Yeah. Yeah. You. Ha yeah. You uh, that's right. Okay. Tell you what. Let's let's uh, let's um, let's pin these guys down in the break after, right, and ask those specific questions. Go ahead, Monique. I just um, when Azair was talking, I just are you mostly transactional in the way that you sell? Because if you're transactional, then people will continue to purchase from you from Amazon. If you have a brand story, you're creating a community, then you would be able to maybe draw them somewhere aside from Amazon and then push them towards the channels that you want them to. So I'm wondering in terms of brand advocacy and creating a community, if there's some areas there that you might be able to build upon. Find these guys in the break and ask those questions. By the way, uh, this is a perfect question for our Facebook group. It's a free group. Ask those kind of questions in there. There's 2,500 merchants plus all the consultants and our team. They will be there for you with that kind of an answer, right? If the answer exists. Okay, for the uh, panelists, are there any strategies that you are seeing in 2022 that are really standing out now and crushing it? For me, probably the one that I see the most, and Scott spoke about this in his presentation, is simple videos. And I know that we've been talking about this, you know, video has been something we've been talking about for years, but people actually really doing simple videos. And I'm not talking about like just with your iPhone, I'm actually talking about just being authentically you. Like, do you get on video? Do you record a video? And even if you stumble on your words, and even if it is slightly imperfect, you put it up and you allow people to see that imperfection. Um, another thing that I'm noticing too, and I think this is because of COVID and the onslaught of people wanting to shop local, uh, really making sure that when you build this brand, you don't have to be this all-encompassing super brand, right? People want to know that there's this person behind the story, that story, they want to know who you are and allowing yourself to be authentic and show up in that space. Uh, the people that I see that are crushing it, I'll allow themselves to show up in that capacity. When I think about e-commerce, I don't, I don't really think of breakout strategies for a particular year. I think of the fundamentals of e-commerce and it might be because of the merchant in me. I think about good product pages, really good product pages. I think about making sure your home page is, is great, tells your great brand story. The, uh, I think we lost everything. You're gonna have to Hello? Yeah, Here we go. It's, it, yeah. There we go. Get fired up. <laughs> <laughs> I think about, you know, I would call it the fundamentals. I think everybody has big Black Fridays here, or most. I think about a playbook. That as you're going through the year, every single week or every single month that you have a sale, that you're documenting every single thing that you did, what worked, what didn't, testing it. The next time, what's your next test? What's your next test? What's your next test? Then when you get to Black Friday, you are firing on all cylinders and you know it's going to work. So to me, that's your breakout strategy is go to the fundamentals, make sure you're building a playbook and then execute on the playbook, especially when you're starting out. So for 2022 and beyond, I guess, um, Google introduced a new kind of campaign called the Performance Max. So what it did was it threw everything in one campaign. So we've been, I've been taught and I've been teaching everybody for the years and years that keep search, display, shopping, Gmail, video separate. 
because there are different metrics. What they've done is they've put everything in one campaign, very easy to set up, extremely easy to run and optimize because there aren't any keywords. Google is trying to take away the control from us because the algorithm is getting better and better. Try those, um, and especially with the remarketing audiences, you'll be pleasantly surprised as to how easy it is to get high quality traffic at very low cost, which converts quite well. Questions for the panel. Orange, are you doing the email blast? Uh, the what's the frequency? Are you seeing any progress? Or, or like, what, what are the results? The question was, are you using any email blasts or other methods, right? And what kind of frequencies, what kind of clusters are you using? And what kind of results are you getting from it? 100% uh, always using email. Uh, it's one of the back end things that can increase your lifetime value. You don't want to, if you're not utilizing email, then if you're constantly spending money to get the same people to spend money with you, it just, um, it's a little bit redundant. So uh, in terms of frequency, because I come from a traditional marketing background, I very much follow the same cadence that a flyer frequency would. Uh, so I'll, I'll kind of go similar to that. So I'll have weekly um, main promotions, I'll have my subcategories, I'll include them in emails, and then I'll usually have follow-ups that come towards the end of, um, you know, my weekly, and then I usually have quarterlies too, but I have a weekly cadence that I, that I go to. I think frequency for e-commerce kind of depends on what your store is like and, and the breadth of product that you have, how often people purchase that particular product uh, from that perspective. So I think it is a, a depends. Let's say you have a consumable item or something like that. I obviously worked at Lowe's. We did emails every single day, but we really had two to three that were like our key winners every single week. And we segmented them really, really the ones when we did more than those two were like really, really, really segmented. So it was a much smaller audience. And that's on top of all of the, uh, almost all of our, the majority of our money was made in the automated emails that you do. So it is super critical to set up everything with uh, abandoned card emails. Uh, if someone's browsing a page and you know it's somebody and they've logged in and authenticated, any of those types of things where you can come back to them to get, you know, add to their carts, add to their AOV, those things are like top priority to get in, in you know, in your email uh, campaigns and, and running. And you'd be surprised, a lot of big companies aren't doing, I was like literally consulting with a private equity company that's got major uh major brands and they have no no uh no automated emails coming out, going out and they've got all the contacts in the world nothing and so their their sales could literally double overnight just by putting in a few different things i just want to follow up for what scott said earlier on acquire a customer at break even or better don't try to make huge profits or roas up front because it can never scale. And email is that backend uh, channel where you really got to hit them hard. Well, I wouldn't say hard, but yeah, keep them going out. Don't spam every two days. Yeah. Mm. Hard, yeah, all right. <laughs> um, in the, this current age of high phone usage, um, how would you compare um, email marketing to now we have text marketing. So we're now, you know, doing the acquisition of collecting cell phone numbers to text. Um, I don't know, does it depend on the kind of company that you have? Any comparison between the two? So the question was whether text marketing is better than email marketing or vice versa. And the answer is, who's there? Well, we, we are a service-based business, right? We're not an e-commerce business. We do marketing for other uh, companies. So we've got our own funnel where we are driving traffic to our landing page and somebody puts in the name and email. And we 
thought, okay, let's put a phone number field as well and see if people give us their number or not. Almost 95% of them are putting in the number. It's not optional, but we are getting that number and then we can text them because when they book an appointment, we can text them five minutes, 10 minutes or before that event that, you know, don't forget, here's the link. So our show operates for our booked appointments have really gone through the roof. And just by tried, it, it's, I, I thought, nah, nobody's gonna give the, the phone number. Right. Oh, everybody's giving us the phone numbers. So yeah, that's my experience. Anything more to add to that? I'd say it's complimentary. Uh, in most marketing organizations that have big marketing teams, the mobile and text messaging is handled by the email team. So they're working together. Uh, just to add to what the gentleman said, um, I do collect uh, phone numbers as well. I find it effective. Um, one of the things that I have is the brick and mortar store. So I do have right at the, at the till, people being able to sign up for text right there to be able to get a discount off the purchase. I also have uh, what I find to work really well is more of a conversational customer win back. So if I don't have someone that purchases either in store or online after a certain amount of time, I send uh, not just promotional text messages, but more conversational, like, Hey, haven't seen you in this shop in a while. You know, how's it been going? That kind of thing. And then I use uh, a software that allows me to do two way text. And I just have the, the email marketing people manage those replies. And you have that automated. That's, that's, that's automated, yeah. Mm -hmm. Through Clavio. <laughs> well, uh, marketing is theater. It's also a continual experiment. There are still people advertising in the yellow pages. Okay. Questions in the audience? Questions? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. What was your name? Deed? Okay. Gold stars all around. That's experiment, experiment, experiment. Exactly what we want you to do. All right. Uh, for the panel. For the panel. Have you seen any ad channels in decline? And have you seen any ad channels in rise? And if so, what are they? Uh, so for me personally, um, the remarketing for Facebook and Instagram has probably been a bit of a decline. Uh, and in the number one platform that I've been seeing a good return on is TikTok ads. So that's probably been my most favorite. And it's really interesting to kind of test different types of ads on TikTok. So I've been enjoying that platform a lot. So this is the exact same one that I was going to say. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, yeah. Anybody well, that? absolutely. TikTok yeah. has overtaken Google as the world's biggest website. So yeah, you've got to pay attention to TikTok for sure. Yeah. And also Facebook is because of the iOS updates, as Monique said, you know, it's more, more and more difficult. And it's the red ocean, but if you want to go to the blue ocean, then go to YouTube, you're still plenty of inventory over there, which is very, very affordable to run ads on. Scott and them are really good at Facebook ads. Yeah. Questions, <laughs> what we got? Okay, lady in the green. Monique, I'm Monique. <laughs> <laughs> 
MySpace, I use Vine, and I use all these platforms. How do you guarantee that Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and all these other platforms will be around for the next 29 years? So we're all investing our business and our time and our money. How do we know it's not just going to be a fast, fast situation? So the question was all about how do you know the channels that you are investing in will be around, will be sustainable, you know, and not disappear like MySpace. MySpace was the 800 pound gorilla in the room when Facebook, a little tiny company showed up and MySpace is no longer existent. So how do you ensure sustainability? Um, we don't know what's going to be around next year. Forget 29 years. Um, we have a say, saying in England is, you build your own your castle on your own land, right? So don't build your business on places like Amazon or eBay. Build up your customer list, email list. Channels are going to come and go. Today, TikTok is coming. Tomorrow is going to disappear. Something else is going to come. So traffic will not be a problem, but you've got to have your customer list uh, with you and you will be able to sustain your business. Yeah, I, I, I don't ever look at it as, you know, putting all my eggs in one basket. I always look at it as the, the world is changing. I mean, we're, we're, the world is changing even faster now than has ever changed. And so I don't ever look at it as how do I guarantee it? I just look at it as like, what are my opportunities now? How do I make the best use of those opportunities? And then, like he said, build, build my castle <laughs> i love that build, build your, your own build your own, own castle own your own, own your own data i think you two yeah. summed it up pretty well i think that's the whole thing about uh about shopify that's the whole thing about shopify that is your own land right it's the whole house building kit on your own land but if you're really going to invest in something you don't invest in a channel you invest in your brand narrative the only way you understand your world is through, is through the stories that you tell yourselves about it. That is what your brand is doing when it is communicating with your prospects and your clients. So if you're going to invest in something, invest in making that brand narrative come alive. Yes, go ahead. Out of a list of how many? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you differentiate yourself between being um, informative versus annoying? The question was, uh, with your email blasts, uh, how are you going to understand whether your content that you're putting out is relevant to your audience? Uh, I ask, I, I frequently ask, my customers and my audience, um, what kind of information they want to know about, what they want to learn about, what kind of content they want to see. And I really shape it around the fact that they get to shape the content that I'm going to create for, for the community. So I try that. Also, um, if you have that many emails that you have to delete that say you haven't opened, um, I'd probably look and see like what were the emails that did catch your eye that, that you did open. Also on a completely different note, I kind of want, <laughs> I want Killian to like record some like really inspirational kind of words on a voice memo so I can listen to it. I love your voice. <laughs> You're awesome. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, you obviously have to look at your analytics too, to, to see, you know, are you seeing declines? Are you seeing, you know, is it, are, are you getting less, less opens? Let, all the, all the analytics that are available to you. I think those are good indicators. Um, I'm a hundred percent in the talk to your customers about it. Uh, I, I think also one thing is to always, in emails, oftentimes people can get very uh, just, hey, what's my promotion this particular week? Uh, it might be my retail background, but but I think I go back to the customer avatar. It's like, am I, it's good to revert back to that and be like, am I even delivering to my customer avatar canvas that we, that we just went through? Is it even remotely like it? Because oftentimes it veers off. 
And so that's something I'd also say is keep, keep an eye on that. Yeah, emails become annoying when it's always buy my stuff, buy my stuff. You know, if you add a bit of content, tips, reviews, mix it up like Gary Vaynerchuk says, jab, 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 and then right hook, then they don't get annoying. In every interaction that you have with your audiences, uh, and I, that could be your seven-year-old and trying to convince them to go to bed, you have to be functionally relevant and emotionally significant at the same time. Functionally relevant and emotionally significant at the same time. The problem is this. If you're smart enough to segment your list, you still haven't segmented your communication. So you're sending out the same newsletter to the segments in the list. <laughs> <laughs> and so what you if you ever go onto a site like Medium, if you've been on Medium, try Medium. Medium is brilliant at knowing how you think. It only puts functionally relevant and emotionally significant content in front of you because what it wants you to do is to engage. Isn't that what you want your audiences to do? You want them to engage. And so you can only do that by playing the two segmentation rules. Segment your audience, but then segment your communication. Panelists, what is the most innovative thing you have seen a merchant do? Innovative? Ooh, um, I'm just trying to think which would be... Mm, I'm firing a blank at the moment. Um, you don't want a fireball. <laughs> uh, Monique, do you want to go first? Then I'll come on to that. In a minute. <laughs> uh, honestly, being a part of like a coach with digital marketing and being a part of that community, the most innovative thing that I would say is when you see merchants actually look at the data. So many people just throw things out there and they're like all willy nilly and they just pray and hope. And the most innovative thing that I've seen is people actually pulling the analytics, looking, understanding what their conversion rate is, figuring out how they can improve it. Uh, and data, people get scared of it and people think that it's boring, but if you actually get into it, it's, it's quite addicting and uh, it can be really, really interesting and fun. Um, but in terms of innovative, that's probably. One of my, one of my favorite things with, with data when I was working on Lowe's.com is to provide all of the information of everything that happened on the website to the buyers who are picking all the products. Because then I'd be like, we don't have any of the stuff that everybody's looking for. Buy me some products. Yeah, you know, that type of stuff. So that's, I love the data one. Uh, one of the coolest things that I've seen a merchant do, and, and I'll bring it, because this is happening. Uh, I've seen it with Apple. Uh, spent some time with them on this, as I've seen them use, you know, like Shopify apps uh, in order to uh, enable e-commerce, but then also to use that within a retail environment. So you might have the, per, you know, they have the uh, point of sale, but then they also have, you can also use other apps that tie it together with uh, line busting capabilities to where an employee in a store has access to all the information for every single product and all the reviews. So if somebody asks a question about it, they can do all of that there. They're tying it all together. So that omni-channel experience is the direct competition to pure e-commerce play. And so all of that is happening and a lot, and it's pretty easier. It's easier to do it with a smaller company than a bigger company. Yeah, I remember a really cool um, stuff we did with an e-commerce store. We use um, Google Optimize. So that allows you to split test your landing pages, your checkout pages and so on. And the, the, diff, the only difference between the two pages, the AB split test we did, was a blue button compared to an orange button. And that was it. So when you try to do split testing, don't try to do a lot of changes because otherwise you will never know what worked and what didn't work. 
either change the headline or the photo or the color of the button. And it's very simple to do. And secondly, as like most Google products, it is completely free of charge. So I would highly recommend you try that. Google Optimize. Probably uh, one of the most innovative things we've seen our clients do, if they ever get there, is that their stores are a perfect reflection of their personal state of mind. If your mind's a mess, your store's a mess. If your mind is calm, your store is calm. And at the point where you can be innovative enough to transform yourself into a serene state of data-driven decision-making, that is when you and your store will transform. Go ahead. So the question is, uh, how long does it take for the algorithm to catch up and to show the results of your experiment? So if you're spending $10 a day, it's going to take you longer compared to $500 a day. So it really depends how much data, uh, how much budget you've got to, to split test and test anything. So I can't give you a figure as to how many days you should be running a test. It really depends that the data needs to be significant. So for you to evaluate what's happening and what's not happening, don't just make a decision on the basis of 10 conversions. You need to have a lot more and then you start to figure out what's happening and what's not happening. Around your inventory, you know, like let's say you have hundred thousand dollars inventory, like stock, like what is the proper amount of advertisement? Like, for marketing, yeah, daily, like that, you know, because like if, if I'm yeah. selling t-shirts for nine ninety nine, yeah, or twelve ninety nine, I know, or I'm selling like a cabinet for two thousand dollars, I'm sure like the per day advertisement makes yeah. different. I mean, or uh, what's the percentage of uh, ad spend you should have? I mean, you said inventory, I would say on your PL sheet. Yeah, um, I would say 15 to 20%, no more than that. 20% at the maximum. Is that per day or per month? No, I mean, it could be a month or year or whatever. So if your annual budget or sales, are hundred thousand, then you don't want to be spending more than fifteen to twenty thousand on ads or your marketing. Yeah. I can think of one. Yeah, there's one. Privy. Privy. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta have privy. Go ahead, Tom. Repeat yeah. the question, please. Uh, what Shopify apps would you recommend using? I mean, I, I do like Privy. Clavio is one. Uh, I like Privy, Clavio, Ultimate Special Offers. That one I like a lot. That one lets you do things like free gift with purchase, uh, spend X amount, get so much percent off. You can schedule them. That one I have a really high conversion rate with, and um, it comes with like top bars that show up automatically when you're on the product pages and that kind of thing. But uh, Privy and Clavio are the ones that I use the, the most. Clavio being one that allows me to do a lot of the back end automated emails, and they integrate really quite well. Clavio gives me the most information in terms of customer data. I can find a lot of that information within Shopify, but I actually prefer to see the way that it's presented in, in Clavio. Ultimate special offers. Go ahead.
Yeah. Yeah. Do the panelists have any uh, experience with Shopify Plus clients and the advantages over a regular Shopify? Scott does for sure. Yeah, Scott does for sure, right? Yeah. I'm back up, guys. What, what was the question? Yeah, it's a good idea. It's a really good idea. Love Plus. So uh, first of all, there's an app that's really good called Rebuy. Who's asking the uh, app question over here? Rebuy works really well with Plus. So that's just my, my starter thing for Shopify Plus. But with Shopify Plus, like I would say the four biggest benefits that I see out of doing it is scripts. So like you can make, you can like invent your own offers. And a lot of these apps, I like, actually like, I haven't checked out the one Monique just said, but we've tried so many different ones to do like bundle offers, buy more, save more offers. But with Shopify Plus, there's no restriction. So with these tools, like I'll go try and do an offer on this one or another one. And I usually have to force my offer into what they allow me to do. Like they usually only have like a few variables that I can control. With Shopify Plus, you can be like buy four, get a fifth, 25% off or spend a hundred, get a free gift. Like you can just invent these things and you can schedule them all with Launchpad. So this is the game changing thing. We should always be driving offers. Like we should always be campaigning. I like those ones that uh, Monique was mentioning because those are AOV campaigns increase the amount that people buy so it's okay to campaign if like you'll, you'll do a discount if people are spending more right but then like right away but what's your product that you sell uh, bracelets. bracelets yeah like buy two get a third free those kinds of things you could do um so i like plus for that because you can schedule the scripts and you don't have to get your whole team together at 8 a.m on valentine's day to like update the website that day launchpad just switches everything over so you like pre-build the homepage, everything else, the offer, the scripts, it's all pre-done and it just flips over. Yeah. Yeah. So I would use those AOV that like I've, I've been in the trenches with Shopify plus people. I know it like very well. We work with lots of clients on plus and the AOV comes down to the scripts. So like AOV offers like that, you could do things like um, CLV offers too, like customer lifetime value offers where you're like free shipping for my VIP customers this weekend and automatically tag them in there. And then it's like people who have been shopping with me for a long time, all of a sudden get free shipping over a weekend. So it's AOV CLV kind of offers that get like, they promote like increased and in repeat spending, but also like the, you could customize the checkout, right? So that's the big one is that you can add like upsells at checkout. Rebuy is another AOV tool that Shopify plus people like scream from the rooftops about that tool because Shopify plus allows you to do the scripts, but they don't communicate the offer that well, but Rebuy does. So Rebuy is kind of like a merchandising app that, that it'll show you. It'll be like, hey, you just added two more, add a third and it'll drop down some suggestions like artificial intelligence. Yeah, Rebuy with plus. Really good. We just did a um, interview with Rebuy. We did a tool time that'll be coming out on our yeah. week or so. Yeah, and obviously you save on transaction fees. So yeah. yeah. It'll make this site. It'll make the site faster in the process. Save you a lot of headaches. Then like with flows is the other thing that I didn't even bring up, but you can like, you can do a lot of like tagging customers based on where they're ordering from. Like, so a lot of like really advanced segmentation right on Shopify that can guide your email campaigns, but also things like when this product sells, sells out, send this email to these three people. Like, so you can do all those like automations a lot better as well. So like, if you use all the features, like to their best ability, you will save, right? Yeah. It depends if, you're, if your store is doing like a million in revenue, I don't know what you're at, but if you're doing like a million, that, yeah. So then your difference is you, it's only like an $800 difference about from where like, cause you save on transaction fees. So you're only spending like $800 more a month. Can you make up 800 more in AOV strategies? Yeah. Yeah. You'll and, and once you try plus, you don't go back. <laughs> corner, corner Scott in the break. Oh, we actually can hook you up with a month to month trial on it because usually you have to commit for a year. We have like special access, we could get you a month to month. Go ahead, would that be cool? Yeah, 
Yeah, I would say I would say like most of the time, people aren't using the features to their f like full potential. So that's why I was kind of harping on that is because you want to make sure that you're actually using them. A lot of people will move to Plus just to save on the transaction fees, and they like the idea of all the features that you can do, but they don't do it very well. Yeah. Like most things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's like most things. Yeah, for sure. All right, more questions. How are we doing for time? We're at eight thirty. All right, so are we are we done? I'm yeah, mix okay. we're gonna mix and mingle. Yeah, we, you go, you close down your panel here. We just, we actually wanted to get a selfie. Can we all like get in tight for a photo, or like, or you could some of you could sit, but just maybe some of us at the front or something. Dawson's gonna take a photo of us here. And Kieran, I'll let you wrap up here. Okay. All right, everybody. Thanks for coming out today, Charlotte.